I want to give you a tour of some key reactions of aldehydes and ketones. All of these reactions happen at the carbonyl carbon itself. Later, I'll talk about other reactions, reactions that happen at the carbon next to the carbonyl carbon. But in this lecture, I'll only cover reactions that happen at the carbonyl carbon. I'm going to cover the list without explaining the mechanisms. This is so you get an overall picture, the reactions and reagents that you need to memorize. In other lectures in this playlist, I'll talk about the individual reactions themselves. We'll understand something about the mechanism and how these reactions can be used. But for now, here's an overview that just shows you the key reactions themselves. Aldehydes and ketones can be reduced. And throughout this lecture, I'm going to pick a specific aldehyde. This is propyl aldehyde. And a specific ketone. This is 2-butanone. But these reactions are applicable widely to a great variety of aldehydes and ketones, whether they're alkyl or aryl compounds, and this immaterial. You see that a hydrogen can be added directly to the carbonyl carbon, making a hydroxyl group at the same time. The reagents you use to accomplish this are shown on the right. You can use sodium borohydride. You can use lithium aluminum hydride. You can use hydrogen with a metal catalyst. Of these, sodium borohydride is mild and more selective for aldehydes and ketones. Lithium aluminum hydride is much stronger, but selective for polar compounds. And hydrogen with a metal catalyst works for a wide variety of aldehydes and ketones and alkenes and alkynes. Among the reactions I'm going to talk about is oxidation of aldehydes, not ketones. But aldehydes can be oxidized directly to carboxylic acids. Of the many oxidizing agents, one that is common that you should memorize is sodium dichromate, sulfuric acid, and water. This combination of reagents is equivalent to saying chromic acid. Here's a reaction that's truly remarkable. An alkyl group is added directly to the carbonyl carbon, making a hydroxyl group at the same time. This is similar, isn't it, to the reduction reaction where we added a hydride directly to the carbonyl carbon and made an alcohol. Now we're adding an alkyl group. And by the way, this also could be an aromatic group that we're adding. Notice that if you start with formaldehyde, you make a primary alcohol. If you start with aldehydes, you make a secondary alcohol. And if you start with a ketone, so we have two alkyl groups there, We'll make tertiary alcohols. The Grignard reagent you use to accomplish this is this guy here. It's an alkyl group or aryl group that has magnesium directly attached, along with bromide associated with magnesium. In the second step, you have to add water to form the final product. And now you're asking, well, how do you make those Grignard reagents? It's actually easy. An alkyl bromide can be treated with magnesium metal to make the Grignard reagent directly. You can make compounds called cyanohydrins by directly adding cyanide to the carbonyl group. You make this happen using sodium cyanide together with an acid such as HCl. You can add alcohols directly to the carbonyl. Like the other additions, this forms a hydroxyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon together with the nucleophile that is added alkoxy. You'll use alcohol plus sodium alkoxide as a base to make this happen. And it turns out that using basic conditions is critical for this reaction. A small change of conditions using acid instead of base gives you a different product. Alcohols add twice under acidic conditions. These compounds where alcohols add twice are called acetals. Products formed under basic conditions, where you only add one alcohol, are hemiacetals. Hemi means half, and we've only added one of the two alcohols. So as you memorize these, basic conditions make hemiacetals, acidic conditions make acetals. Take a look at this reaction. Amines add to carbonyls, but the initial product immediately loses water, so we make a compound called an imine. To accomplish this, you simply use the amine. It's a primary amine because we need to have two hydrogens on the nitrogen. 
and acid is typically used as a catalyst. On the other hand, if we use a secondary amine, where nitrogen only has one hydrogen attached, the initial product also loses water, but in a different way. The product is an enamine, where you have a carbon-carbon double bond with nitrogen attached directly to it. It's called an enamine because it's an alkene that has an amine attached. Notice that the difference here, this is a primary amine, while this is a secondary amine. Both reactions are typically acid catalyzed. And finally, here's an interesting reaction. You can actually transform the carbon-oxygen double bond of a carbonyl into a carbon-carbon double bond. You see I've written the carbonyl of the aldehyde and ketone in a different position just to emphasize that this carbon-oxygen double bond is being replaced by a carbon-carbon double bond, whether that's an aldehyde or a ketone. The reagent we use for this is a Wittig reagent, rather strange looking phosphorus compound. Again, it's very easy to remember the structure because in the reagent, the double bond is formed with carbon and phosphorus rather than carbon and carbon. And again, you probably wonder how to make this guy. You can start with an alkyl halide that has a bromine and a hydrogen where you want the double bond. The other two substituents are the ones you want attached to the alkene. You treat the alkyl halide first with triphenylphosphine and then with a very strong base like butyl lithium. So there you have it. A tour of the reactions that I think you need to memorize that all start out by the nucleophile adding to the carbon of the carbonyl group. I'll take you through the mechanistic details in other lectures in this playlist.